نحمده ونسلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المتيح والقرآن But man 
and the institution of man is one being and jinn who have this power to do what they like. You understand so far, yes? It's very, very simple stuff. Because this is going to get very heavy as I go along. Now, Allah creates man, and you've heard all the ahadis, and you've heard the Quranic ayahs on this. And your ulama always tell you about the purpose of Islam and the purpose of this, but this is not my function to you to tell you today what Islam wants from you. Allah created man and then wanted union with man. So he says very, very clearly, Kuntu kanzan makhfiyan fa'ahbabtu an uraf That I was a hidden treasure and I wanted to be known. Uraf. The word uraf. We look at this in the context of marifa. Knowledge and union with Allah. This is the purpose of Allah creating. When I mean union, what do I mean? Man and his Lord are in such close union that man begins to appreciate his position and the position of Allah in his materialistic life. This is the context of فَأَحْبَبْتُ an أُعْرَفْ and then Allah Ta'ala very, very clearly states another purpose in the Qur'an. Very, very beautifully he states. As he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ the Lord stating very, very categorically. Inna Allah ashtara min al-mu'mineen. Subhanallah. Did you know? Allah. This is the Dajmani, or this is the context of the ayah. Did you know? Allah has bought the Mu'mini. Say it to Allah has bought these Mu'mini. Who? These Mu'mini. Who are the Mu'mini? Us. Allah has bought us and our assets. But we, us, we are sinners. How can He buy us? We are malun naqis. We perform so much sin. Allah never said, I bought animals. <coughs> I bought um, so and so. I bought so and so. He could have bought anything. The world is his. But Allah says, I bought these momini. This is Allah's shopping. We must appreciate what the context of the act is. In the last time. Allah bought these Mu'mini. This is Allah's shopping. You know when you want to buy something, you go out to town and you go in the whole town and then you see whatever you like, the best thing you like, you buy it. But when you buy something, you want to buy something which is good, isn't it? You don't want to buy something which is bad or which is defective. And let me give you some... <coughs> Let me give you some free legal advice on this matter, that if you sell anything defective, Section 14 of the Sales of Goods Act 1979 has a statutory requirement, legal requirement, that every product in the market must be of merchantable quality. This is the law of this country. Every product of sold during the 
course of business section 13 and section 14 have made restrictions as to the quality of the product you understand so when you go out to the shop and you buy a microwave oven and it turns out to be defective you go back to the shopkeeper and you slam it in his face and you say this is Against section 14 of the sales of goods, like, so I want my microwave, another microwave, I want my money back. You understand so far, don't you? This is your shopping, but Allah's shopping is far, far, far greater. When Allah shops, He does not buy defective material, He does not buy material which is inherently and merchantable, does He? Do you? Then why should Allah? So he says, Inna Allah shara min al mu'minin. And he says, I bought you. <coughs> but, oh ya Allah, we want you to buy it. We want you to? Everybody say, buy it. Who doesn't want to be bought by Allah Ta'ala? Is there anybody here? Very few people are speaking. Perhaps you don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah, Everybody wants to be bought by Allah Ta'ala, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So Allah Ta'ala now gives you an equation. He gives you a method whereby He will buy you. And that is, you must be pure and clean and of good quality. How do you improve your quality? Ya Allah, I am a sinner. Ya Allah, I have committed so much felonies and misdemeanors. I am a sinner. I am poor quality product. So how does Allah from the earth by you sitting here in Oldham? How is that transaction effective? That business transaction effective? Allah says. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُو عَلَيْهِمْ مَا يَعْتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ قَالُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ One last prophet, Bil Huda, with guidance for you to be bored. Wadin al Haq and the truth. Leo the Hilo Waladin Kulli. But this is a very separate context again. Huwaladi Baasa fil Ummiina Rasulam Minhu. I have sent to you a prophet from amongst you. He's not an angel, is he? He is amongst us. <coughs> and what are his duties? Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. He recites the ayahs of Allah. Number one. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim. And he purifies you. Say subhanallah. Subhanallah. Number two, duty number two. Where you al And he gives you knowledge of the book, the Quran. Subhanallah. Wal hikmah. And hikmah. So, kitab and hikmah. Everybody can know the kitab, but some people know the hikmah of that kitab. So three duties Allah entrusted upon his Rasul. You understand this so far, don't you? Everybody understand? Yes. Okay. One, this is the 
crux of my discussion to you today. So now you've understood this far, this is, here comes the heavy bit. So please pay attention. Three duties have been given to Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Recite the ayahs, purify them, and teach them the kitab and hikmah. Three duties. In the <coughs> law, when duties are given to a person, <coughs> that special procedure is known as a trust. Please pay attention. This is very, very important. I don't think you've ever, ever must have read this, this analogy which I'm making of this ayah of the Quran. This is very serious stuff here, so you must understand this. When duty is entrusted to man, by man, that duty comes in two forms in English law. One duty is through contract, and the other duty is through trust. Yes? This mosque is established most possibly on trust. The law of trust governs this mosque. So when Allah gives certain duties to Rasulullah sallallahu for the purification of man, so I say and I contend that Allah opens a trust. Allah opens a trust. And so many, 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 many anbiya come and they are the trustees of that trust. And what is the purpose of that trust? Where you zakki him. And Rasulullah is the greatest trustee of Allah. Where you zakki him? We are talking on the point of one particular duty of Rasulullah, and that is to purify man. So Allah can buy. Because I mean the other two aspects of the duty I can't talk about. I haven't got enough time. But we're talking about where you zakki him tazkirah. On another place, Allah says, Rasulullah, when they give you money as a trustee, accept that money and purify them. Where you zaki in same context, purify them. So the institution of purification is the duty of Rasulullah. But you know, and I know, that Rasulullah lived 1400 years ago. And his bodily form does not now exist. You can go to Medina Monopoly and it, is, it exists there. But remember, Allah said very, very clearly in the Quran, Qul Rasulullah, you say, Inni Rasulullah ilaykum jamia. I am Rasul for you all. From those who existed in the time of Adam and till those who exist till the day of judgment, I am your Rasul. So you understand that to be a Rasul, you have to have the duties of a Rasul to be enacted. So there is no prophet after Rasulullah. But the institution of prophethood still exists today. Or let us put it in this way. So people of Burnley, remember the context and the institution of why Yuzaki him still exists today. Now I have labeled Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, remember, I have labeled 
And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your prophet and my prophet, I have labeled him as a trustee. Please, these are my last words. You must take note of these because this is the essence of my discussion, of my research here. Will you zaki him and he purifies? So Rasulullah is the trustee. But you know that if this mosque is established under a trust, there has to be beneficiaries in law. Beneficiaries are those people who have benefit under the, under the trust. Beneficiaries, you understand this? Beneficiaries are those people who benefit under the trust. So, the Ummah and all that creation who comes under the banner of in English law, which require of the trustee. Section 25 of the Trustees Act, 1925. I'm sorry to be very legal, but that's my field, and I have to give you some references so you don't think I'm just making a little gobbledygook. Section 25 of the Trustees Act, 1925, says, look, oh, trustees, you have to have two powers. You have to have any powers? Two, one power. You have to have knowledge of the beneficiaries. Ilm, which we say in Urdu. You have to have knowledge of these beneficiaries. And number two, you have to have the power to execute that trust. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the context of a trust, he must have the knowledge, ilm, and he must have the power these two concepts are the heart of the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah. We believe Rasulullah as trustee of the trust which Allah enunciated, whom the institution and purposes for you him. Rasulullah has knowledge of that trust and he has the power to execute that trust. Am I saying this? About knowledge? No. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying it. Because maybe Rasulullah, of course he has a mirror. Maybe Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thought that in the 20th century people of my ummah would think I don't have the ilm. But do you know what Rasulullah said? Wallahi la yakfa alayya khushukum wa la khushukum inni la raakum min walai sahih. This is the knowledge and the gravity of knowledge of Rasulullah as a trustee. That I swear by my almighty God that the khushu and khuzu, the biasness that is inherent within your heart, I swear by Allah I see that biasness. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not exist in the so far as these other people say. But wallahi, I swear by Allah, inni la'alaakum min wallahi zahri, because you are my beneficiary, you can exist in a small town of Oldham. You can exist in Manchester, or in London, or in New York, or Washington, or in China, or Tokyo. But remember, I sitting in Medina Tayyipa in Nila Alakum Mimbarai Sahib. I can feel you all that. This is the knowledge of the Sultan. Wallahi, he said, I swear by Allah. And then, this is the knowledge of that trustee. The second point which section 25 requires is power of a trustee to execute that trust. You know these people of the Anaqidah, you know what they say? 
the Sulullah has no power. Should I tell you of the power of the Sulullah? Would you like to know the power of the Sulullah? The susceptibility of the Sulullah is this. That Allah says, No and Kurana if I revealed this Quran on a mountain, then the mountain would be turned into pieces. But you know what Allah says about the Surah He says, We revealed this Quran upon our Surah. So the power of Rasulullah is far greater than the power of these huge mountains. This is the power of Rasulullah. And then you talk about ikhtiyah, the facility of Rasulullah. Did you know what Rasulullah said? He said, Inna ma ana qasimun wallahu yurdi. Indeed, I give and Allah gives me. So, if you want, now, you understand this point very, very clearly, that Rasulullah as the institutor of the institution of where you him under this trust, he has the power, the knowledge, and the power to purify according to the context of where you him. So remember, the institution of prophethood to the 20th century Muslim is saying today, O oh Ummah, that if you want to be pure and if you want to come under the banner of Inna Allah Sharabid al Mu'mineen, then remember you must purify yourself, and to purify yourself, you must make contact with Rasulullah. What is that? Bahuda Huda ka yehi hazar. Nahi yaar koi makar magar. Jo yaar jo bahaan se ho, yehi yaar ke ho, jo yaar gahi bahaan se ho. This context is given by the Quran. This institution is established by the Quran under the guides of what you said to him. So remember, whether you sit in Oldham, in England, or in Europe, you must make contact with Rasulullah and he will purify you. And when he purifies you, then the time comes when Allah swears by that heart. Then Allah says, Inna ashab al-kafi wal-rakini kaum min ayatina hajara. Allah swears on that heart which is purified and then dedicated to him. So dear audience today, bringing my discussion to a close, I tell you today that when you understand and appreciate Islam, you must not understand and appreciate Islam in the context of the theology. Because Christianity and the institution of Christianity is theology. And Hinduism, Sikhism and Judaism Enunciate the system of theology, Marxism, Fascism, and Communism institute the system of ideology, but Islam is that one religion in the world which on the one hand talks about ideology and on the other hand talks about theology. So when you study Islam, when you appreciate the principles of Islam, <coughs> broaden your horizons and do not restrict yourself to theology. Come into the realm of ideology and seek the purification of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this was the function of the awliya whom you hear said today. So when you go out of this hall today, when you leave the four corners of this mosque today, your duty to that sahab all, all the other awliya who are mentioned today, your duty to them does not finish. Your duty starts from today and starts from the day you educate yourself. 
Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illa Allah. 